wrote down 20 things from the 50 minutes that the professor talked about this, mor this morning that I would rush to the, street, uh, to the office tomorrow and start challenging and changing. How am I going to get all those things done? What am I going to do with the education of the patient as the patient becomes more interested in life extension? What is a disease? What is the perception of consumers about what? You know, thousands of questions, not tens of questions. If I just sat around, I'm sure you have them all written down. The pharma business has gotten more competitive than ever. You know, Gandhi said that you must be the change you wish to see in the world. You know, yeah, it's gotten more competitive. I know there are 45,000 ways that you can actually lower hypertension. You know, and I know that today we keep on adding things. You know, yeah, we have this new uh, drug for diabetes, but it actually works for asthma and all kinds of things. You know, we have the indications and the crossovers and the rest of the stuff. And what it's creating is creating tremendous confusion with the docs and with the, and the, and, and with the patients with, the, with regard to whatever happens. It's gotten more competitive. So what? The more competitive it gets, the better it is. Remember, remember George C. Scott in Patton. He was one of the greatest philosophy guys in the history when he said, you know, the idea is not to die for your country, it's to have the other SOB die for his. <laughs> remember that? The reality of the thing is as the business gets more competitive, as the things get harder, you know, don't die for your company, have the other guy die for his. Let them lose share. Let them lose relevance. And then Gloria Steinem said, the first problem of all of us men and women is uh, not to learn but to unlearn. And I think that in your business, boy, I mean, do you guys know so much. God, you know everything there is to know. And I don't think you're forgetting enough stuff and challenging stuff that you were doing before. So you need to change. Okay, so let me tell you why before I tell you how. Let's first start with the profession that we're all in. Marketing is relatively new. You know, at the end of the day, finance goes back all the way to the Romans and engineering back to the Egyptians. Marketing is still perceived as art and, in, as, as art and intuition. I don't care where you go. You know, in every company, especially in your business, you know, it's kind of all the idea. It's the art. It's like the gut. It's what you see. Accounting has gap. Chemistry has a periodic table. Manufacturing has TQEM. And at the end of the day, marketing, and where I've been successful in my career, and I think I've done pretty good for myself, is where I actually did nothing except on the base of data. You know, when I work, went back to work for the Coca-Cola company after being out for, for uh, uh, seven years or thereabouts, you know, there were two things that you needed to do when you came into my office. You needed to answer two questions. What's the strategy, and are we going to make any money? You know, and if you could answer those questions, I wasn't interested in talking to you. I didn't care who you were. And, you know, and people complained. Meetings took 15 minutes. You know, I didn't do any meetings that would la lasted longer than 15 minutes. At 10 minutes, my secretary will come in and will say, five-minute warning. You know, if you were not prepared to, get, to make your case in 15 minutes, I wasn't interested in talking to you, whoever you were. And I was being arrogant. I was just trying to get a discipline in place with regard for us to think like business people. Marketing has science, but we borrow it from every, everywhere else, you know, from psychologists, sociologists. We talk about consumer behavior. We talk about market structures and modeling. We talk about regressions, brand valuations that came out of the, out of the investment banking business. But it's not well understood inside companies. You know, we still, you know, figure out, you know, the marketing director in a lot of companies today is the CFO. Because the chief financial officer stands in front of the CEO and the rest of the company and says, those people cannot tell me what they're getting for the money. And by God, they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars, and I don't know where it's going. Then John Pepper, who was the chairman of the board of Procter & Gamble, you know, one day said, you know, half of my marketing dollars you know, uh, uh, work, half of them don't. I don't know which half. Shame on John. Every single dollar that you spend needs to be accounted for. People say to me, well, you're too much of a critic of advertising. I'm a critic of advertising because advertising is so critical to what we do, and I think the advertising business is not reinventing itself the way they should reinvent itself. And we need them to reinvent themselves because that is the link between products and services and consumers. But people say to me, well, you know, advertising takes time. And I said, okay. 
Okay, so run this one by me, okay? Let's just follow the logic. So you go over to this guy called John Kerry, and you say, so, you know, Senator, you know, we're spending a lot of money in advertising. Everybody knows who you are, great awareness. They don't know what you're standing for, and by the way, they're not planning to vote for you. But don't worry. Over time, okay, your image is going to build, and we'll have a strong brand. And the guy says, like, over time, like, how long before November, that Tuesday in November? <laughs> and, you know, and you kind of say, well, no, no, it takes longer. Because, see, advertising doesn't really do the thing, okay? I say, that's BS. Advertising doesn't drive intent to vote. Advertising doesn't drive intent to purchase. Advertising shouldn't be done. It's that simple. 